What is up everyone? I hope y'all are doing well. My name is Ishan and welcome to the video. Now, I had my work shift early in the morning, had my class, went to both of them today and I got, a, I got some stuff to get done. So let's just jump right into the video. Like I was talking about last week, man, I'm so excited to start with these research videos. And in today's video, I want to talk about the very first research project that I ever got to do. And that was during my freshman year of college. I would say I started getting involved in research at a very decent time because I mean, I've met folks who, who've been doing research since high school, but I've also met folks who've never really done research projects outside of labs. And I feel like I kind of fall right in the middle just because I, I really hadn't done any research before coming to college and during my freshman year, like that was the first time. And the way I got introduced to this opportunity was because I was already connecting and um, talking to this professor since like the first semester that I'd been here because I knew about the cool projects that he, he had been involved in in the past. And as the second semester of my freshman year rolled around, I just I just asked him if he had any any projects that he was currently working on that he needs students for. And it just turned out that he ha he had some space and I was able to hop on a project. So what was I working on? We were looking at Saturn's moon Enceladus and looking at its surface images that were taken by past flyby missions and using those images, me and another student were trying to identify some of the most prominent geologic features on its surface. The way we did this was we would load up the images in the software, track the exact coordinates that we wanted to look at for the features, and then we would just write down notes on what we would see, what was visible, what was not. We did this over the course of a couple of months and towards the end we compiled a list of the most observable features that we saw on the surface so our professor could use it for some details for some of his meetings. So why does this research matter? I think I can answer that question in many different ways but back then the way I saw it was it was just something small that was that was necessary to finalize and contribute to some of the details for another bigger project that our professor was working on at the time. So there's that, but let me tell you all why Enceladus is such an interesting place. It shoots out plumes that are made of um, water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, along with salts, silica, and organic matter. And the, we know this because these plumes were actually sampled by the Cassini mission when it flew right through them. These plumes are hypothesized to be supplied by a global ocean that's underneath Enceladus's surface, which means that there's a potential subsurface ocean of liquid water. Scientific evidence also suggests that there is potential formation of hydrothermal vents on Enceladus pretty much similar to what we would have expected to see on the early Earth, which means it's mirroring potential complex chemistry that led to the formation of life. And the more we understand the potential early chemistry of how uh, life came to be on the early Earth, the better we can apply that model outside of Earth and try to find life in, or the emergence of life in other places. Also, there's certain parts of Enceladus that have a lot of craters, whereas there's also parts or regions that have few craters. And that means that Enceladus's surface went through resurfacing events recently in its past, which means it's geologically active. And that's why there's geological features present on the surface. And that's why we were like, that's what we were looking at in our research. But the geological activity ultimately means that there's a potential energy source that's present on Enceladus that can drive chemical reactions. Putting it all together with its potential global subsurface ocean, unique chemistry, and internal heat processes, Enceladus has the necessary requirements to create and sustain life as we know it, speaking in terms of like a microscopic scale and like looking at it from an astrobiological point of view that's what makes Enceladus such an interesting place to explore. Anyways after I finished up my research project I realized that I wanted to continue to explore in the realm of astronomy and that's why in the first semester of my sophomore year I, I took a heavy course load in astronomy and even created an independent study to dig deeper into some things and I'm gonna talk about that in my next video so stay tuned for that but that is all I got for y'all in this video if you made it this far into it you probably fall under two categories 
either you really support me and for that i appreciate you so much you have no idea or you might be in the other category where you actually are interested in this kind of stuff and enjoyed this video and if that's the case then be sure to smash that thumbs up button man and consider hitting that subscribe button if you're new and turning on notifications because i release two new videos every single week and i'm gonna catch y'all in the next one